Well, good morning. I don't know why it feels particularly special this morning, but it does. It may just be because Mark has been kind enough to offer me to come and stand before you again, which I haven't done for some little time, many of you knowing that I've become somewhat of a minor invalid. We're recovering. Welcome to the second Sunday of Epiphany, this great Epiphany season, and we'll hear more about it later on. Um, I do not have any particular notices. We've made inquiries variously. I'm looking at Mark, and he's not looking as if it's something I must say, which is wonderful. So we'll continue with our service then by standing, remaining standing, and singing together hymn number 510. Will you come and follow me? 510. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. 
the grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty, Almighty God, God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you and against, against our, our neighbour in thought and word and, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve, serve you in newness of life to the, the glory, glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We remain standing to sing the Gloria. Mighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Will you please be seated for our first reading? A reading from the book of Revelation. I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break the seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. 
Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so will you please stand to greet the gospel. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thank 
the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee this day, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And we're off, so to speak. Somehow, Epiphany seems to me to be something of a new year in the endless cycle of the church year. Epiphany, of course, is the season when we recognize Jesus manifest as the Son of God. The eyes of the world, though generally these days just a few of us, are opened again to the incre incredible, the impossible, the utterly implausible, this person. In our Gospel reading today, a 30-odd year old, this human being is identified as the very Son of God. And this process of manifestation is also part of Christmas. Not just the coming we celebrated on the 25th, but also the knowing of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And hence the theological Christmas extending out till Candlemas. Just a short question. Anybody still got their decorations up? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I have to say neither have we, but then we have a reason. Now, my son went back to Australia recently, and he's the only one that can get in the loft at the moment. So we had to take him down before he went. <laughs> I have wondered why we have 12 days of Christmas and why he's deemed unlucky. I've got a feeling it's because somebody wrote a song. I'm not aware of any other reason, but there we go. <laughs> back to the Gospel. In our Gospel reading, we've missed the first act. And Jesus here calls three disciples, each of whom responds. Andrew says, we found the Messiah. Philip declares him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. And Nathaniel proclaims, proclaims him son of God and king of Israel. How much more do we need it written in large letters? All three of these have a personal encounter with Jesus. Rather than any long theological debate and reading of scripture and so on, about which they probably had a fair idea, the Old Testament that is, but that which we might think is part of the, the journey of calling nowadays. Lots and lots and lots of learning. Yeah, I've been there. Deborah's been there. Mark was there a while ago as were many others of us. It is interesting that Nathaniel, before he meets Jesus, has a somewhat derogatory comment to make over where he thinks such a Messiah should come from. Certainly not from Nazareth, a marginal little humble town. Just a momentary hint of the theology of humility and servitude that comes to us throughout, throughout the New Testament. Perhaps with the hindsight of two millennia and the whole of the Bible to read, we should be saying quite the opposite. Of course, Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, should have come from humble beginnings, as he did. Let's have a quick look at that Revelation reading. I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. No one else in the heavenly realms had the authority or the wherewithal, the honor or the capability. But then we hear, then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered. 
Interesting vision. Mighty kingship there then. And they sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. For you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God, saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. I reflect back a moment to the words I used on Christmas Day of the God whom we worship being for all peoples and for all nations, as we've just heard again, something to hold on to in these difficult times. Revelations is sometimes seen as something of a heavy book that we should read with care. But here, see, Revelations can also open our eyes to the most extraordinary realities of our faith. And I repeat, extraordinary. John's faith, as he wrote down his visions of the very presence of the Lamb. Can you imagine how he felt when he awoke in the morning before beginning to dictate those words, or write them himself, who's who's to know? It is a calling, and in our gospel we hear also of three callings, and it's all we've discussed is a calling of the disciples of John, already a man of great faith. Jesus is calling them, if you like, from following the rabbi John to following him. Little do they know what they're letting themselves into as they each, in their own way, reply, yes. In the third reading set for today, should we have heard it, is from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. And we would there have heard about the calling of Samuel. You'll remember that great story, the story where God keeps calling Samuel in his sleep, and Samuel keeps waking Eli as he thinks it is him who has called him out into the night. And Eli, you'll remember, was a man of great faith, a prophet and an aged leader of the temple and the teacher of Samuel. And we hear in that reading, should we have heard it, that the Lord, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. It was not like the old days when memory had it that God spoke often to the prophets and the people. So much so that even Eli took three attempts to recognize that what Samuel was experiencing, was what he was hearing, was something quite so special. Samuel did not have a direct encounter with God, or the Son of God, or the Lamb, but a voice in his sleep, a vision, a calling. And the history of Samuel went on to be mighty as he answered that call with the small words, Speak, for your servant is listening. Speak, for your servant is listening. It is my understanding that most, if not all, who feel that God is speaking to them in some way tend to answer with something along those lines. Personally, I remember saying, because it was a major change of life direction, so I do remember the words, I knelt before an altar and I said, if this is you, God, then tell me what you want me to do. Longer words, but much the same as Samuel. Epiphany is the season of the manifestation of Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God. Epiphany is about the experience of the presence of God, the Son, among us. Epiphany is about the call of Christ in our hearts for us to listen again, to find God's call. It's there, and in a knowledge it is not likely to bring us the answers we in our humanity hope for to answer 
Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. For there is no doubt that Jesus has a call for each of us. And as the family of Christ in this place, our calling is to do his will for those not in this place. It is for us to bring, to be, their encounter with Christ, that they too might feel and heed the call of Christ. And they too might answer, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So let us be a kingdom and priests serving our God. And those to whom we serve will also reign on earth. Then we will see Christ manifest here on earth and truly in our hearts. And that is Epiphany, a beautiful season. Amen. And so as we, this season, open our hearts to the word of God within, let us stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated now as we pray together. Our Father, our God, our Lord, who sits upon the throne, we give all praise to you and call upon you to hear our prayers today. We dare to pray to you even though we barely comprehend your greatness, your power and your majesty. We come before you humbly and meekly and in awe, but yet with the confidence given to us because of the sacrifice of the Lamb, your only Son, Jesus. We pray to you with bold courage that you will hear our prayers, because the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has triumphed. He alone is worthy to take from your own hand the scroll of judgment, because he purchased by his blood each of us for you. Hear our prayers today, Father, for the world, for our country and our community, for our fam families and ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. 
Jesus, because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for, for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation, intercede for us as we pray for our world. A chill wind blows around the world, a gathering storm is menacing on the horizon, and Lord, we fear for the world's peace and stability. As the crisis of vengeance and violence deepens in the Holy Land and in the Middle East, Lord, we plead to you to send peacemakers and voices of calm and reason. We pray for you to halt this evil, end abruptly the plans of those who wish to further fuel the hatred and violence that is causing death and misery and unimaginable suffering. Come to our aid, Lord, we pray. Free us from tyranny and greed. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy Spirit, come upon the church across the world. Guide us, call us, draw us near to our Saviour and our Father in heaven. Teach us through your word. Embolden us to do your bidding, to invite others to take their place with you. As Philip invited Nathaniel to come and see, we pray that we too will confidently tell others that we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. We pray that we will be able to beautify the lives of our friends and neighbours with the gift of knowing you, Jesus. We pray for an outpouring of you, Holy Spirit, across the world to bring love and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we thank you for our blessings, our community and our church family, for our homes and for those who love us. We pray specially for, for charities and volunteers who are working hard to support those who find life a struggle. We pray that we will be alert to the needs of our neighbours during this cold weather. Touch our hearts, Father, if you have work for us to do in aiding our neighbours who have no home or not enough food or who are in, in distress or sick or who are lonely. Lord, today we pray for our own dear Francesca Wilson undergoing treatment. Comfort and heal our friend, Lord, our friend who always prays faithfully for us all. We pray for all who grieve, and we pray for all who mourn Christopher Cochrane, who was called home to you, Lord, this last week. In a moment of quiet, we give you those whose names sit in our hearts today. Look on us with compassion, Lord. We pray, for we are all your people. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. you please stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. With that in mind, let us remain standing to sing in glory hymn number 494, I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is with us. with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give thanks, thanks and praise. praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, whom you have created all things, who has, was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. In the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh, as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us upon the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you and holy people. And now we give you thanks because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
who in the same night he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. You broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Blessed Mary, St. Nicholas and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, who trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life.
God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
And so let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now please stand for our final hymn, number 748. O oh Jesus, I have promised.
this hymn to finish on. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of Christ. Christ.